One of the biggest questions that I get asked is which camera should I buy? And at the rate that cameras are dropping today, and a lot of times people only having the budget for one camera, that could be a very daunting road to go down. I was there at one point, so I feel you on that. And then we saw the explosion of both of these cameras onto the scene, just to make it a little bit tougher for you to make a decision. At the time of recording this video, the Sony ZV-E10 sells over 500 units per month on Amazon. And if you poke around a little bit, you'll quickly find that the ZV-E10 is one of the most popular content creator cameras that's on the market today. That is until the Osmo Pocket 3 came along, which matches that unit sold rate. The question that I have for you is, are you down with the OP3 or the Sony ZV-E10? If you're down with the OP3, then I created a course on how I set mine up for cinematic shooting, how I use it in different lighting environments, and how to get the most out of it complete with project files. I'll leave a link to that course in the description, but for now, I wanna focus on the image quality and real use case scenarios so you can figure out which one of these two cameras is best for you. Take a look at this shot. Can you tell the difference? I used the popular lens, the Viltrox 13mm f1.4 on the end of the ZV-E10 so we could match the focal length of the Osmo Pocket 3, which is 20 millimeters. Before I tell you which is which, let me tell you the questions that I had going into this comparison. Should someone pick up the Pocket 3 over the ZV-E10 with the kit lens? Could you use either of these cameras in a professional setting, say for something like client work? How good are both of these cameras image quality when shooting straight at a camera with no picture profile set? How does their log footage compare to each other in a controlled and uncontrolled lighting environment? How does the mechanical stabilization in the Pocket 3 compare to the ZV-E10's active stabilization? I'm coming at this comparison as someone who might be a beginner or a rookie when it comes to content creation. So I shot a lot in program auto and in the normal color profile. Kind of like the whole idea about just opening the box and going outside and shooting with it. And then I put myself into an intermediate mindset and exposed both cameras manually and used a couple of different picture profiles like D-Log M on the Pocket 3 and S-Log 3 and Cine 2 on the ZV-E10. The goal of this video is to give you a wide array of options so that you know which camera is best for you. Let's just jump into this thing and see what we come up with once we dive into their usability and image quality tests. I'm Joe and this is the Film Alliance. I'm not a huge fan of specs and what these cameras look like on paper because too many times I jump into the creative mindset and then I find myself in a certain flow and then bam, I get stopped up by some limitation or something that I didn't know about. Like I've said many times, once you go outside and you start using these cameras in the real world, specs no longer matter. If you knew what camera was producing which video, please let me know how you knew. I knew because I was editing it, but if I was looking at both of those images, I probably would have just been guessing. But some of the things that I do look for is the stabilization, the colors, and the low light shots. Because usually when I see those shots, I can tell which camera is which. If by the end of this video, you're still undecided about which one of these two cameras is best for you, I made a free camera quiz that may help you get on the right track, and I'll leave that quiz in the description. Now let me tell you a little bit more about my experience so we can establish a baseline and then build out from there. I've owned the ZV-E10 for about two and a half years now, and I used it on everything a content creator would use it for. I used it as an A-cam for a client head shoot, I did some B-roll with it, some YouTube videos, some overhead shots, and I even shot a nature documentary with it, which was featured on Alpha Universe, that's Sony's website. So I have had quite a bit of experience with the ZV-E10, and I know how to push and pull it, and where it's weak, and where it has strengths. I have not owned the OP3 as long but I have used it in all things a beginner would use it for, and also how a seasoned professional would use it. And I can say that I'm confident that I have found the best way to expose both of these cameras in different lighting environments to maximize their image quality. And believe me when I say, if you do not expose both of these cameras properly, they will not give you the nicest looking image. I go into depth on how I expose the Pocket 3 in my course, and if you'd like me to make a course on the ZV-E10, then let me know in the comment section. On to camera overview. If we were to compare body to body alone, we're looking at $519 for the Pocket 3 and $698 for the ZV-E10. 
The Pocket 3 was released in October of 2023, and the ZVE-10 was released in August of 2021. Well, I shouldn't say the body only, because you do get a few extra accessories. It's not much, but they do come in the box. You can also pick up the Creator Combo Kit for the Osmo Pocket 3, which will run you an extra $150 US, but that comes with a DJI Mic 2 and an extra battery and a wide angle adapter and a few other accessories, which I think makes it worth that extra cost. I'll leave affiliate links in the description of all the cameras and accessories that I use in this video. But you can purchase the kit lens with the ZV-E10 right now for 798 bucks, but I would caution you away from using the kit lens unless you're on a tight budget. I say this because the image quality you will get out of the kit lens compared to something like the Sigma 18 to 50 f 2.8 is a night and day difference and you'll be very happy with that camera and lens setup. However, that Sigma lens or this Filtrox 13 millimeter f 1.4, which I also recommend for the ZV-E10, will run you an extra about $500 US. So now you're blowing past that $1,000 mark if you go with something like this. I use the Viltrox 13mm f1.4 and the kit lens throughout this video, but if you're interested in all different types of lenses that you could pick up for the ZV-E10 or for another Sony APS-C camera, then I made a video all about APS-C lenses and which ones I think happen to be the best value lenses on the market right now. I'll leave that in the description as well. By the way, if you like videos like this one where we talk about different cameras and I teach you tips and tricks on filmmaking and how to make better videos, make sure to join the Film Alliance by subscribing. All right. With that said, the huge advantage you have with the ZV-E10 over the Pocket 3 is you can interchange lenses, obviously, as we've been talking about up until now, which means you have more creative options when it comes to your different looks. You have different focal lengths that you could use. You could use a zoom lens or a wide lens like this if you're doing some vlogging. And if you had the budget, you could buy a wide array of lenses, which would cover all of your focal lengths and therefore giving you more creative freedom. But just because the ZV-E10 can interchange lenses doesn't make it a superior camera, especially when we look at stabilization. The Pocket 3 has a built-in gimbal for amazing mechanical stabilization, whereas the ZV-E10 has digital stabilization, which crops in, I think, about 1.5 times. Also, I'll be the first to tell you, the active stabilization on the ZV-E10 does not produce as stabilized footage as the Pocket 3, and a lot of times, depending on what lens you're using and what movement you're making, you're gonna end up with a lot of unusable footage. But if you wanna shoot super smooth footage like the Pocket 3, then you're gonna have to pick up a budget-friendly gimbal. But let's not forget that you can throw the ZV-E10's footage through Catalyst Browse, which is Sony's clip management tool, and you can slow it down in post-production. But you would have to disable steady shot on the ZV-E10, and I've never been a huge fan of doing an extra step in post-production. I like to get my footage right in camera and then upload it to whatever rig that I'm editing on. And then if anything, adding a touch of stabilization to my footage. But mainly I like to get it right in camera. All right, let's talk about the camera bodies. The big difference between these two cameras is not only their sensor size, but also their body size types and weights and their body orientation. You can hold the Pocket 3 vertical and still get a horizontal orientation. And the ZV-E10 is more of a traditional looking camera with a bigger body. So you're gonna have to hold this thing horizontal if you wanna get horizontal shots or vertical if you wanna go vertical. The bigger body also means better protection in case you drop it and a lot more buttons and dials so you can customize it more. The Pocket 3 only has the joystick and the record button. You can do more with the joystick than just push the pan and tilt and move it around, but you can't get to any exposure settings like aperture, shutter speed, and ISO without having to dive into the display or the menu of the Pocket 3. The ZV-E10 has the ability to quickly jump between different modes and it has some custom buttons where you could do things like toggle manual focus if you wanted to set the exposure in different ways and just customize the outside to your liking. If you wanna turn on singular focus or manual focus with the Pocket 3, you're gonna to have to do a couple swipes on the glass to get there. Whereas with the ZV-E10, I have one button set and I can just toggle between manual focus and autofocus. Now this doesn't seem like much of a problem, but if you're doing that multiple times an hour, it's gonna be a problem. I hope with a firmware update, DJI allows us to customize how we want to use our joysticks and the three clicks, the two clicks, and the one click that they already have installed as different functionality in the Pocket 3. Another thing to mention that you might not think about is the ZV-E10 also has a quarter mount thread on the bottom, whereas the Pocket 3 does not. You have to add an extra little attachment to the bottom of the Pocket 3 in order to get this thing to stand on that little tripod that comes with the Pocket 3. This doesn't seem like a problem until you're out in the field and you wanna put this thing down on a tripod or somewhere high and you realize, oh shoot, I don't have my little cube that it comes with, so now I'm gonna have to like put it on the 
cement or something and hope it doesn't fall over and hopefully you're not by water and hopefully it's not by a, a ledge or something that's gonna fall off of. The point is make sure that you have this little attachment when you go out and shoot with the Pocket 3 because you don't ever wanna just stand this up on a park bench and then have a gust of wind come by and then it'll fall off. As of right now, the only thing on the bottom of the Pocket 3 is the USB-C port, which you can use to either charge the Osmo Pocket or transfer files. Let's take a pause for our sponsorship. I wanna thank the sponsor of this video, PGY Tech. They sent me over this OneGo Solo V2 camera bag about a month ago and they said, use it how I would normally use a camera bag and just see how I like it. As a side note, one of my main camera bags is this PGY Tech bag, which is the One Mode 2 bag. So I'm very familiar with PGY Tech and their products and their durability. They also sent me two other bags, the One Go and the One Go shoulder bag to use for quick on the go style filming. And one of those bags I actually replaced that little DJI tote bag with this bag right here, the One Go, because it's smaller, it has a strap, and it's just a lot easier to use, and everything fits, and it has a little bit more room for anything else that I need. The One Go Solo V2 has an expansive opening, so it's easy to look in and quickly get whatever it is that you need. It has dividers that give you clutter-free experience and better organization. The shoulder pad makes it very comfortable to carry around, and if you're someone like me, if I can fit everything into something like this rather than a big bag, then that's what I'm gonna do because then I'm more portable and on the move. So thank you to PGY Tech for sponsoring this video. I'll leave this bag in the description. Well, not this bag, but a link to this bag in the description. The ZV-E10 has a headphone port, a mic jack, along with an HDMI port and USB-C for transferring files and charging the camera, which means the ZV-E10 is suited more for someone who wants to do, say, interview talking headshots or professional client work where they can actually externally record because it doesn't have two card slots. We're gonna talk about audio later in the video, but one thing that's really cool about the Pocket 3 is it has an internal receiver, so you don't need to hook up anything to the outside of this when you use the DJI Mic 2. But one thing that's more important to me than the actual camera bodies is the images that they produce. One thing that I love doing is taking a camera and trying to figure out its perfect sweet spot of exposure, especially in different lighting conditions, and also learning and understanding how they both take two different lighting environments. This does take practice, and it took me a little while really to figure out how to maximize the image quality out of the ZV-E10, but I'm pretty confident that I know how to take really nice, sharp looking images and videos. The Pocket 3, on the other hand, I was able to pick up and just right out of the box get some amazing shots without having to do much heavy lifting when it comes to exposure work. In my opinion, I think the big difference here is the 10-bit versus the 8-bit. If I really tried, I could probably get the image quality to look just as good as the Pocket 3, but it's just gonna be a little bit tougher, especially when I go to post-production and I have to color grade some of that S-Log footage. I remember the first few months that I had the ZV-E10, I was really struggling to get the image right, and I didn't know, maybe I was just doing something wrong, but now that I've had a few years experience, I found that the Pocket 3's footage is so easy to nail every time. My skies don't seem to be blown out when I'm exposing for subjects that are outside. I can shoot backlit shots without making the entire foreground darkened. And it just seems to have better dynamic range, probably because it does. I didn't take these cameras to the laboratory where we could get a mathematical equation of which one has better dynamic range. This is just my experience with shooting both of them 8-bit versus actually compared to a 10-bit camera, even though this is a one-inch sensor and this is an APS-C sensor. In my opinion, I think that the APS-C sensor will give you better low-light performance, but the Pocket 3 will give you better image quality when you're in a bunch of different lighting environments. So my point is, if you're a beginner and you want a quick out-of-the-box experience, go with the Pocket 3. But if you want to be challenged, then pick up the ZV-E10 and it will produce very good looking images, especially with the right lens. But if you do like to be challenged, then go with the log profile on either of these cameras to start maximizing their potential. The Pocket 3's log footage D-Log M is one of the easiest log footage profiles I have ever graded or shot with. It's not as flat as the Sony's S-Log 3 or the Fuji's F-Log, but it is a great way for anyone to get their hands dirty with log. I don't think people should just jump right into S-Log 3 and go out and film an entire client headshot or video in S-Log 3 because you will struggle in post-production and you'll probably freak out. I think that's happened to me a couple times, whereas I would absolutely go out and shoot in D-Log M with the Pocket 3 for a client shoot because it's just that easy to grade. But I would caution you to go and practice. I actually made an entire course module on D-Log, not only how to shoot it, but also how to color grade it in my course in case you wanna take a deeper dive on that. I always used to think that the 8-bit S-Log 3 wouldn't perform as well as a 10-bit 
log, especially when you start pushing and pulling the shadows and the colors in post-production. I actually remember shooting in S-Log3 with the ZV-10 and not being able to grade it properly, and then just thinking that maybe it was a gimmick that Sony put on these cameras. But here we are years later, and now that I have more knowledge on how to not only expose but color grade, I got to say that the 8-bit S-Log3 footage looks pretty good. Of course, the Pocket 3 is gonna have more data and information for me to color grade, which is 10-bit footage, but the ZV-E10 is not far behind. I would not buy the ZV-E10 because of its S-Log3 capabilities, but I would consider S-Log3 on the ZV-E10 just as an added bonus, especially if you're someone who wants to jump into the log footage arena. The Pocket 3 can shoot in 4K up to 120, and the ZV-E10 can only shoot in 4K up to 30 frames per second. You can shoot in 1080, 60 on both of them, and then upscale it in post-production, but I find that shooting in 4K in camera will always produce the best results. If you were a 1080 shooter or a 4K 24 shooter, then either of these cameras would work for you. But if you want to shoot in 4K 60 or up to 120, then you're going to want to go with the Pocket 3. And that's one of the reasons why I love the Pocket 3 so much, because I have the option to shoot in 4K60. In fact, that's one of the reasons why I don't use the ZV-E10 as much as I would like to, because I can only shoot in 4K up to 24. I could shoot in 1080, 60, and then upscale it in post-production, but again, I find that shooting in-camera 4K24 will always produce the best results. The Pocket 3 has three focus modes, continuous, singular, and product showcase. The ZV-E10 has a ton of different focus modes, too many to name, and it also has product showcase, so they both have product showcase mode, and that's why I tested out product showcase to see how they would both react to a fast autofocus test. From what I found, the Pocket 3 is best to be put in product showcase mode when you're doing any type of product video, but I don't think it will ever beat out Sony's world-renowned autofocus system. Also, it will depend on the lens that you have on the ZV-E10. Here's what I mean. When I did an autofocus test between the Pocket 3 and the ZV-E10 with the kit lens, the Pocket 3 would win. But if I threw the Viltrox 13mm f1.4 onto the ZV-E10, the ZV-E10 would win. So it all depends on the lens that you have on the ZV-E10. I did notice some focus pumping with the Pocket 3 in certain lighting conditions, whereas there wasn't too much of a problem with the ZV-E10. But that APS-C sensor would theoretically produce a higher quality image in low light situations. One of the big questions I had was, is the 10-bit Osmo Pocket 1-inch sensor better than the 8-bit ZV-E10's APS-C sensor? And regardless of what should be the mathematical truth, I found that there was not much of a difference at all. If anything, I noticed that the ZV-E10 had a bit less noise in the shadows and in the darks. I know this has to do with the lens, and the Viltrox 13mm gives me really great results, even up to ISO 800. But the test that I like to look at is how the light flares look and how the white balance sensor works in lower light environments when you're shooting in auto white balance. Overall, I would say the ZV-E10 with the good lens will outdo the Pocket 3 in a low light situation. But that doesn't mean that the Pocket 3 isn't good. I put out a cinematic video on the Pocket 3 a few weeks ago to see what kind of low light capabilities it could have and it really did blow me away. This is the ZV-E10 and we're testing out the native audio inside of this camera because we want to see how that compares to the Osmo Pocket's native audio. All right, so here's our audio test with the Osmo Pocket 3 straight out of the Osmo Pocket, so no DJI Mic 2 hooked up to it. We're just kind of seeing what it looks like or what it sounds like. Now we have the external mic hooked up to the ZV-E10. This is the AWS 24G Sinal. Here's the DJI Mic 2 hooked up to the Osmo Pocket 3. If you were to get the creator combo, this would come with the Osmo Pocket 3, so that's good for people who want to just open the box and go out and start shooting with it. I use the ZV-E10 as an A cam, a B cam, and a C cam, and it has never overheated on me, produced a corrupt file, or freezed up on me. It has been a great little camera, and I would highly recommend it to anyone who is starting out. But the Pocket 3 is one of the best value cameras for someone who might be in that $500 range and doesn't have enough of a budget to get a good lens. I'm amazed at the Pocket 3's image quality, its low light performance, and its stabilization. The battery life out of the Pocket 3 is awesome as well. 
That's another point. The ZV-E10's battery lasts me about an hour and a half of consistent shooting, and the Pocket 3 lasts me almost a half a day to three quarters of a day if I'm consistently shooting. However, you can buy a bunch of cheap third-party batteries for the ZV-E10, giving you longer use time. The Creator Combo Kit that the Pocket 3 comes in gives you an extra battery, which will absolutely last you a full day on just one charge, and you can charge the Pocket 3 in about 21 minutes. I would say that the Pocket 3 beats out the ZV-E10 with the kit lens, but when you get a lens like that Viltrox 13 millimeter 1.4 or that Sigma 18 to 50 that we talked about earlier, then the ZV-E10 would win against the Pocket 3. So I hope this video helped you learn something today and we can keep this conversation going in the comment section. If you have any questions or comments or insights, definitely leave them below. Also, don't forget to follow me at the Film Alliance on Instagram. All right, see you guys on my next video.